we are getting close to being able to draw our ship. We have uh, my game class doesn't really do anything quite yet. We have the rendering system somewhat complete, or at least complete enough, in theory, complete enough for our game. There's probably some bugs in there. We'll find them. But I essentially want to create the ship and draw the ship on the screen. The ship won't rotate or anything quite yet. We ha don't have a input nor a physics system, but we at least hopefully have enough to draw the ship. And so that's what I want to do. Remember we stubbed out this functionality long before we even started, or not long before starting, but before we wrote the renderer class, we stubbed out this functionality and we can say render.addGeometry with all this stuff. I'm actually going to comment this back in. Uh, it wants to know what a geometry pointer is. I'm not sure why we have, I'll probably just put that up there for demo purposes. I'm going to pound include geometry. Now since we're only using a geometry pointer here, in theory I could do my my trick here where I say namespace rendering class or struct or whatever it was, geometry. Like so I could get away with that and and then I also have to say using rendering geometry. And then that'll get rid of that red squiggly. I could do this trick because we're using a pointer to a ship geometry, but nowhere are we trying to do anything with that pointer. If I try to say ship geometry arrow at that point, now I need to have the definition of the class because the compiler doesn't know what's out here <coughs> with the simple class geometry. However, even though we're only using a pointer here, assigning to it, not uh, dereferencing it or anything like that, uh, we're in a CPP file. Okay, so I I think that's probably a little overkill doing that in here because this is just a single CPP file or compilation unit that I have control of. Let me just explain that one more time. If I if I have a header file, let's say this is a header file, and I pound include a bunch of stuff in here that I don't need. So pound include this, pound include that. And by don't need, I mean I could forward declare it using that pointer trick that I just erased here. But say I have a header file and I just have a pound include heyday in that header file, and then my code base is extremely large. I have one compilation unit here, or CPP file, C++ file, and another one. These are all CPP files. Okay, several CPP files. Let's say my project's huge and I have a hundred of them. And I pound include this same header file into multiple compilation units. Maybe not all of them, but many of them. Well, everything I pound include in this header file then gets copied and pasted by the preprocessor or pound included into all these compilation units. And these are the things that the compiler has to grind on and, and the preprocessor has to do all that copy paste and that just lengthens your compile time and oh such a headache. And then and then if you do what's even worse is if you say using up here and you open some namespace scope up here and sometimes, a lot of times, for example QT, I notice they don't really use namespaces in the QT library. So the more I pound include, well the global namespace is now being polluted, not just in this header file, but in these compilation units. These CPP files are the things we actually compile. And so ah, you just want to minimize scope. But in this case, I'm actually in the CPP file. I'm not in a header file. Maybe I'm working in this CPP file. So if I say using in that single little spot there, I say using whatever and I pound include a file or two here, well it only affects the compile time and the scope visibility or what's visible in scope of this one compilation unit. So I think doing that trick that I was showing you is a little overkill for, for a single compilation unit. Let's get going. But hopefully, hopefully that discussion helped you. We pound included geometry here. Uh, we exposed it here with the using. We now have to pass ship verts, num ship verts, all of that stuff. Control Alt L to go to the solution explorer. I'm going to go to our old game, my GL window.cpp. And I believe we had ship verts here. I'm going to copy that and uh, for now I'll just paste it right here similar to the mygl window technique and then we have num ship verts here i'm going to copy this and paste it right here now let's compare the approaches from our old gl window game to the new approach i'm going to put the new approach whoops didn't mean to do that i'm going to put the new approach over there and uh let's let's look at this file for example this is a compilation unit a cpp file we made the unnamed namespace to make all these things private to the one compilation 
unit, so nothing can extern to it, nothing can link to it accidentally. And and so essentially putting all these items down here, this is coming from back in the day, they're coming from the C programming language. C++ is an extension on top of the C programming language. And when we define, notice I'm using the word define, not declare, when we define data members out here, pretty much in a compilation unit, then they are static. And by static, again, I'm not, I don't mean one instance per class, I mean the memory for this is allocated by the compiler directly in the executable. All right, the, declaring this out here makes our executable larger. Not, not really a big deal, it's just the, you know, probably 20, 30 floats or something like that, but still, it, 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 it creates size in the executable, and then all these initialization values uh, require size. Uh, the, they are what makes the size. Now, if I was doing all zeros and I was just initializing zeros, uh, that, that's another topic another day. But for now, yes, these increase the size. So you may think, Jamie, wow, you're really beating a dead horse here. Well, if I put these out here, that's going to that's going to be defined statically, meaning the compiler is going to create the RAM for this in the executable. And when the executable is loaded by the operating system, that's when these will take their place in RAM, and their scope will exist for the, or their lifetime, not their scope, sorry, their lifetime will be for the entire program, the entire duration of the program. Their scope, <coughs> if I put them in the M name namespace, their scope is limited to only being visible within this one compilation unit. All right, now you may think, Jamie, you are droning on, but I think it's really important to understand these nuances. They come from the C programming language, All right? Defining these out here, well, if I define them out here, they're, they're, they may as well be static. If I make five game instances, which I won't, uh, I'm only going to create one, but all of a sudden I have data that's, now when I use static, I mean it's one, one instance, one value shared amongst all instances of my game here. That's the foundation of the keyword static. So you may think, Jamie, Jamie, just put it in the class. Okay. Let me grab this. Control X. I'll get rid of the rest of this. Control Shift L L L. Uh, Control Alt L. Let's bring up the header file for my game. So here's the header file. I'm going to move the compilation unit for my game over there. And I'm going to paste that code uh, right here. Okay, notice any issues. Okay, first of all, we need to bring vector 3D into scope here. So pound include math vector 3DH. And since we're in a header file, I'm going to explicitly say math colon colon. Copy this. Control C, Control, actually Alt drag, Control V. And you think we're good to go, but we still got a red squiggly here. Why? C does not allow you to assign to a variable inside of a class. Java and C Sharp let you do this all day long. And you know what Java and C Sharp do when they see this syntax? They say, oh, oh I, I'm going to put this in the constructor for you. I won't tell you that's what I'm doing. But I, I, this is data out here. This is not code. And so when you do this assignment, you're forcing me to, to kind of execute some code here. All right, so so Java and C Sharp will actually put that in the constructors. So let's let's pretend like we're Java and C Sharp and and put it in the constructor ourselves. First thing we're going to have to do is create a constructor. So I'll go down here, my game. I'll declare it there, and then right here we will define it. Actually, give it a body like so. Shift Tab, Control L. And then I'm going to grab all this, Control C, and put it right here. Tab that in. Get rid of all. Whoops. Get rid of all of this, and put a comma. Well, the compiler is still not satisfied. Remember, an array name is technically a pointer, but there is a difference between an array and a pointer. <coughs> And the video is getting a little long, so we'll talk about that in the next video.